You guys have asked and I'm sharing. I'm telling you how I get my light white crisp images in three steps that you can implement today. Hi and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Kristen Fulci, a brand strategist, website designer, and commercial photographer for creative small businesses. Today, I am sharing how I get my light, bright, crisp white photos that everyone has been asking about. And there are three really easy steps to get it that you can implement today, and you don't even have to spend a ton of money. Step number one is to shoot with natural light. So we're always gonna wanna shoot with a big, bright window. And do not make an excuse in your head and be like, well, I've heard that tip, and I can't do that, Kristen, because I live in a small studio apartment. Well, I lived in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. We had two windows, like, that's it. It was so dark, so gloomy. But shooting up against a window, making sure that the blinds were tilted the right direction, I got these nice crisp photos and nobody knew where I was at. So you can totally do it too. Pull up your table, pull up your poster board to your window. If you need to adjust the blinds, go ahead and adjust them depending on the time of day. You might wanna bring it down. Those might create lines on your um, workstation. So just go ahead and look at that to see, but bring it up to here. The second thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in so that we can kind of get more of it in the shot. This is the product that we're shooting today. This is Spa Times Mimosa Body Scrub, and I love all of her stuff. I have them always in my house, which is why we're using it right now for this video. But the second thing you're gonna wanna do is reflect that beautiful natural light back so that we're not creating this really strong shadow. That can be beautiful. Those are really beautiful, great photographs. If that's your style, if you're wanting this bright, white, crisp, all around image, we're not gonna wanna get those shadows. So we're gonna wanna reflect that back. So I have my white poster board over here. Um, this is from Michaels, Joanne Fabrics, anywhere that you can get it at. It does not have to be perfect. This is a used one. It is bent, it is stained and apart from photographing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be white so that it can reflect back that natural light. So if we're gonna shoot here and we're gonna go ahead and put the product here, maybe we're gonna lay it down so that we can see like the label, right? We're gonna reflect that light back onto it by putting it here. So you can either grab a chair, grab a step stool, anything that you can to kind of help prop it up. Sometimes if I'm getting a quick shot, I'll just use my knee and go ahead and shoot overhead. Another option is that you can shoot from this direction so that you're not kind of blocked by this. That's if you love this beautiful background that's behind us. Right now I have a chair that's all comfy cozy, so that could work really beautifully for the background. Again, same thing, you're gonna wanna pull up a chair or a step stool to help prop this up so that you can go ahead and take your photos. Now, these are images that you can take on a camera or on a smartphone. Both of them will come out equally as light, bright and crisp if you follow these three steps. The most important step is step number three we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we are editing the photo afterwards. We're gonna do as much as we can ahead of time to get that light, bright, natural light on there. But sometimes we're not gonna get that pure crispness until we edit it. We're gonna to want to make sure that we use a great program to do that. So when I first started out, I used free programs like PicMonkey, and I can tell you that yes, I wasn't spending money, but I was not getting great quality photos. Honestly, there was grain in them, it changed the resolution of them, and I just couldn't understand why I couldn't get these beautiful images that so many bloggers and Instagrammers had. When I started using a pure editing program that's meant to do that, that's not on the web, that is not free, that I did have to pay for, that is where I got that absolute perfect image. I wasn't 80% of the way there, I was 100% of the way there. The program that I use and love is called Lightroom. You can get it for $10 a month, where you get Lightroom and you get Photoshop. That's it, like 10 bucks a month is like two coffees, right? And you can edit all of your images. And the great thing is, is that if you take it, your photos with your camera, download your photos to your computer, you can use Lightroom on your desktop. If you take your images on your phone, if you have an iPhone, you have portrait mode and you love shooting on it, you can download Lightroom for your phone as an app. And any of these little shots that you take, even if you're out and about, you're at a coffee shop, you're in front of your desk and you take a quick snap, you can get that beautiful image here by using Lightroom as an app. 
The things that you're gonna to wanna to look out for in Lightroom as really quick tips, because we can go into a much deeper video with this, showing you all of the behind the scenes, but you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to a couple of things. You're going to want to increase the exposure just a tad, because we don't wanna wash it out. That's not the style we're going for. You're gonna to wanna to increase the whites. The whites are gonna increase literally only the white parts of the photo so that we're not washing it out as much, right? We're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the shadows. Bring that down just a little bit if you're getting too much of a washed out look with that exposure. And then you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the color section where there's saturation and vibrance. For saturation, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't put that up too high because you're gonna get that fake coloring that doesn't look natural in photos. So if you're gonna use saturation, bump it up just a tad, but focus on vibrance. That is where you will get that pop to come through. And the contrast that you're seeing there between the pop of color and the white is gonna make the white look even crisper, even more white, and it's gonna get that perfect look that you're looking to achieve that's totally Instagram worthy. So those are the three tips. Grab a whiteboard, get your window, and like get you some Lightroom, which I'm gonna leave a link below so you can easily click on over, download it today, $10. It is so worth it to just pay that every single month. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe so you can see more of those in-depth videos as we release them in the future. And comment below if this helped you up your product photography game. I want to hear all about it. See you next time.